in the Dobson coal, there was what we called sooty backs. It might be about an inch wide. And it was just like soot out of a coal range. And you were breathing that all day long. And when you were shoveling coal, it may be, you, all you could see of your mate the other side of the coal box was this light. Mm -hmm. And you were breathing this. One of the, the important things you wore was a pair of football stockings with the feet cut out. That's right. And you put them on over the top pulled the bottom part of the stocking down over the top of your boots so as you couldn't get small coal pieces of coal into your boots, you mm -hmm. know. The coal is hard and brittle, very bright and sparkling, burns freely and is free from smell. The West Coast region contains large amounts of high quality coal, which is in demand in international markets. There are 13 coal fields on the coast, Two major coal fields near the Grey River are Paparoa and Brunner, containing seams up to 20 metres thick. Thomas Brunner found coal in 1847 while exploring the Grey River. By 1864, mining had begun and a town sprang up around the mine. Other mines opened nearby and the Lower Grey became a place of bustling activity. By 1888, the Brunner field was producing a third of New Zealand's coal. They work in the heat and the coal black dust sticks to the skin like a burned pie crust. We curse each day that the miner must go down in the Brunner mine. During the second half of the 19th century, coal formed the backbone of the West Coast's economy. Coal heated homes throughout New Zealand and helped the development of coal-fired railways that opened up the country. But coal mining was back-breaking and dangerous work. The technique depended entirely on muscle power. Miners chopped out coal with picks and then shoveled it into waiting carts. The miner's breath comes short and hot. He uses all the breath he's got, whether it's good for his lungs or not, down in the Brunner mine. Seams of coal were mined using the board and pillar method. Sections were extracted, leaving a pillar to hold up the roof. Then the pillar was attacked as the miners retreated towards the entrance. There were three main causes of accidents in coal mines. Rock falls, explosions, and coal tubs knocking men over. Some miners also died from lung disease. The Brunner mine explosion in 1896 was New Zealand's worst industrial disaster. At 9.30 on the morning of the 26th of March, an explosion was heard. Two men went underground to investigate and were later found unconscious. From about 11 o'clock, rescuers began bringing out bodies. Many rescuers also suffered from the noxious gases. The final death toll was 65. The official inquiry said that the cause was the detonating of a charge in a part of the mine where no one should have been working. However, some experienced miners claimed that fire damp, methane gas produced by coal, had accumulated and had not been cleared due to an ineffective ventilation system. Though there have been a number of mining tragedies in New Zealand, most mine fatalities have been single deaths. Of the 141 men killed in coal mines between 1900 and 1914, over two-thirds were from individual accidents. But even though mine safety improved during the 20th century, mining tragedies still occur. In January 1967, an explosion at the state-owned Strongman mine killed 19 men. Four bodies had to be left in the sealed-up section of the mine because of the danger of further explosions. On the 19th of November 2010, there was a large explosion from methane gases at the Pike River mine in the Grey Valley. Two men escaped from the mine. Five days later, while a rescue team waited for the conditions to improve, there was a second explosion, and it was confirmed that the 29 men still in the mine were dead. Their bodies remained there. A sound that'll creep through the miner's soul is the shake and rattle and down she'll roll a hundred feet of rubble and coal down in the Brunner mine.